Should you always tell the whole truth? I'm Father Kurt Hine with Light of Christ Anglican Church, and we are going through To Be a Christian in Anglican Catechism. We are now uh, discussing the Ninth Commandment, You Shall Not Bear False Witness Against Your Neighbor, and we are on question 344. Before we dive into this, let's go ahead and take a moment and pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Okay. Uh, let's look at 344. What other acts are forbidden by this commandment? This commandment forbids all lying, slander, or gossip, all manipulative, deceitful, or insulting speech, and testifying falsely about myself for personal gain. So the spirit of this commandment to not bear false witness against your neighbor reaches much further than simply false witness in a court of law. and includes all practices that damage the ability to to know truth, that keep people from knowing the truth that they ought to know. To know, that is, to have the ability to know what is real, what is. Lying, slander, which is lying about someone's character. Gossip, which is using what you've heard about someone as a form of entertainment instead of actually caring about them. Manipulation, which is abusing the gift of words to make someone a tool toward what you want instead of a person to love. Deceit, which is trying to hoodwink someone for personal gain. Insulting speech, using words to tear down when you ought to be building others up. And then testify, testifying falsely in order to gain something for yourself. This is sadly very common, as it's much easier to make yourself feel better about yourself by tearing someone down so that you feel like you are above them. Question 345. What sort of speech should you practice instead? I should speak at all times with love, wisdom, and truth, so that my words may honor God and comfort and encourage my neighbor. Behind this command is the reason why God gave us the gift of words. Why did God give us the gift of words? We have been given the gift of words in order to give voice to the good reality that God has made. God made this world good. He says it over and over, Genesis 1, and it was good, and God saw that it was good. We humans are the clods of dirt that speak. We are the ones that give actual voice and song to the glory of God embedded in the entire universe. That is the incredible calling of us humans. And it's the weight of this glorious calling that makes the abuse of this gift so harmful and horrible. Our words are meant to transmit love, to convey wisdom and truth, to honor God and cause others to be comforted and encouraged. What a beautiful gift that we have in our ability to speak what is real, to speak the truth. 346, when is it right to speak of your neighbor's sins? I am forbidden to gossip or slander, but I must speak the truth in love, reporting crime, speaking against injustice, and advocating for the helpless. So do we ever speak ill of someone? Well, not in gossip, but actually, sometimes, yes, we must. In fact, we are called in certain situations and obligated to speak of the sins of others. Not as a way to avoid our responsibility or for entertainment purposes. That's what gossip is all about. It's What gossip really is, it's a lack of courage to actually deal with the problem mixed with this perverse delight in people's failings. That's gossip, and that's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about the Christian duty toward truth to speak up when we see sin. We should always be doing this in love, that is, in a way that genuinely seeks the good of the other. So lovingly and mercifully confronting someone who is sinning, and because of their sin is hurting others and themselves. This could be reporting a crime in order to get law enforcement involved, so a, per a person can't continue a pattern of abuse and hurt towards others. Speaking against injustices so that they can be repaired and rectified. This could mean advocating for those who are helpless and don't have a voice for themselves. In fact, when we don't speak in these situations, we're actually committing a sin of omission against the truth. 347, must you always speak the whole truth? To keep a confidence or to protect the innocent, I may at times need to withhold the whole truth, and I should always exercise discretion that my candor may not needlessly, needlessly cause 
harm. This is an, an important distinction to make. When we speak as Christians, we are required to speak truth, but we are not required in all cases to speak the whole truth to everyone. Not all truth is for everyone. Not all truth is for everyone. We must remember that the highest Christian principle is love, to seek the good of the other. What is good for this person? Some people are not ready for certain truths yet. An obvious example would be um, a child. We wait until a child has reached a certain age before we have the birds and the bees talk, and that's appropriate. Not all truth is meant for everyone, okay, at, certain, at the same time. Other people can't be trusted with truth. People can use truth against you or against others. This is why you don't confess your sins to just anyone, I hope. I hope you go to a priest who is required to not speak of your sins outside of the confessional. Sometimes we withhold truth to protect others. Perhaps we've been made aware of something that is very personal, or I've been told something in confidence. Unless this knowledge poses an immediate threat against innocent people, it should not be shared. Such information can be used by Satan and sinful people to damage others. While we must not damage the truth, we need to be wise in how, when, and to whom we speak truth. The governing rule is always love, to seek the good of the other. We have to ask the Lord for wisdom to know how to speak the truth, how to do it in love, and when. And our last question today is 348. How does keeping this commandment help you to become like Christ? By practicing love and truthfulness in speech, I grow in self-restraint, kindness, and honesty, so that I may know God with a mind free of deception, praise him with an undefiled tongue, and more truly love my neighbor. When we speak a lie, we actually tear ourselves away from the truth and create a fissure in our own being. The more a person lies, the more they lose a sense of not only objective reality, but subjective reality. They lose a sense of who they really are to the point where if someone lies enough, they don't know who they are anymore. However, the more we learn to speak truth and live in truth, the more whole and healthy we become. Knowing who we are, we are then able to freely engage ourselves with God and others without duplicity, or anything inauthentic. It really opens up to us the experience of loving others and being loved by them. And this is the beauty of truth. If you liked this podcast, go ahead and hit the like button below, leave a comment, hit that bell so you, uh, you know when these new ones come out, and I, Lord willing, will see you next week.